This 289's been around with me for a long, long time. In its first uh, life, it ran with cast stock 289 heads. Uh, eventually I put screw-in studs and guide plates, little upgrades, some roller rockers. Um, and the push rods that were originally uh, in the engine were the stock uh, steel push rods. This is uh, not hardened or anything, it's just a steel tube and the ends are sort of swedged in place. This is a mass production push rod. Uh, they're known for being somewhat weak under high lift uh, cams and high spring rates on the valve springs. These can bend. And so um, in addition to that, the stock um, studs, which are pressed into the block, are known to pull out. So a common upgrade is to replace them with screw-in studs, um, case-hardened push rods, and guide plates to help with the, with the alignment of the push rod. And so uh, this is what I had replaced it with. This is a hardened steel push rod. It's designed to be run with guide plates. Uh, the ends are welded in place so they don't come loose. Um, and this was a good upgrade for my cast 289 heads. And, and then later in its life, this engine had 351 Windsor heads uh, that were run on the 289. Uh, in both of those cases, I was able to run the stock pushrod length, which is a little more than 6.8 inches um, tip to tip. Uh, however, uh, in this form of the engine, its current form, um, I've replaced all the stock components. Previously I had a, a standard um, flat tappet camshaft, stock style flat tappets, cast heads, and although I had screw and studs and guide plates and roller rockers, the, the geometry was basically stock. And so the stock length push rods worked very well. In this engine I've replaced the stock style flat tappet camshaft with a comp cams retrofit roller cam, uh, comp cams, roller lifters, AFR cylinder heads, and scorpion roller rockers. And that's quite a big uh, change. And uh, in this version of the engine, the stock length push, push rod will no longer work. It's actually too long. And I'll show you in just a minute how I know it's too long. Uh, but um, with the stock push rod being too long, I have to figure out what the correct push rod length will be so that the valve geometry is correct, both uh, so that it will provide the performance that I expect it to in opening and closing the valves uh, correctly, but uh, also with regard to wear so that the tip of the roller rocker rides on the valve stem where it should. And so the way this is done is by using an adjustable push rod. Now I know my stock 6.8 inch give or take push rods too long and so I bought an adjustable one that can uh, go between 5.8 and 6.8 uh, inches in length. 6.8 being about what the stock rod is and too long I know it needs to be shorter so hopefully um, somewhere in my range of 5.8 to 6.8 I'll find the correct length and the way you do that is simply by unscrewing it. And as you unscrew it, it becomes longer. So at the top end, it'll be uh, 6.8 inches in length. And then I can screw it in to reduce that length until I find the correct pushrod length. Now, I'm going to install one of the stock pushrods here and show you how I know that the stock push rod is too long. So I'm just going to put one of the rockers on. Um, the piston is at top dead center on compression stroke, so both the valves are closed. And all I need to do is put my poly lock on here and run it down to zero lash, just making sure that the push rod is in the cup on both the lifter and the rocker. And I'm going to take the camera off the mount here and spin it around and show you looking at the roller tip from the end it looks like it's rolling off the edge of the valve tip you can see that um, from the camera angle 
the roller on the tip of the rocker shaft is uh, to the left in this view of the valve stem, meaning it's too far. That's because the push rod is, is too, too long. Uh, in order to get this uh, adjusted properly, I need to shorten the push rod length, which will move the roller towards the fulcrum point a little bit closer. And so in order to make that measurement, I'll pull the rocker back off, pull the stock push rod out, and I'm going to put my adjustable push rod in place. I'm going to take a look at it from the side here and adjust it a little bit and then I'll show you what I've done. I've got the adjustable push rod in place and focus. The tip of the roller is much more centered on the valve stem now. But it's not enough to eyeball it like that. I've got to actually check it. And so in order to check it, we'll pull the polylock or the rocker off. I'm going to take a sharpie and I'm just going to color the top of the valve with a sharpie. You can use a machinist ink if you want to um, but not really necessary. Just color the top of the valve with a sharpie like that. Go ahead and stick the rocker back on. and run down the poly lock to zero lash. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the engine through its normal direction of rotation and I like to do it at least twice. So I'm going to make the valve open and close twice. The intake valve is opening, coming closed. And there it goes again. Intake valve opening and coming back closed. Now, what I'm going to do is remove the poly lock and the rocker arm. And I'm going to look for the wear pattern on the valve stem itself. And you can see the mark right where the roller made contact with the valve stem. And that is pretty well centered on the valve stem. I guess I guessed right the, the first time. Um, I've already been through this and, and actually measured it. Uh, but uh, this particular time I was just demonstrating for the camera, but it looks like I got it about right. Uh, that's what you're looking for, right about in the middle of the valve stem uh, for the contact area for the roller um, to make contact with the valve uh, stem tip. Uh, if anything, you want it a, a, little, a little on the high side, uh, not on the low side. So centered to maybe slightly above center is perfect and that's exactly what you're looking for. Um, in my case it came out to be uh, 6.8 I'm sorry 6.5 inches uh, so 6.5 inches gave me the ideal contact pattern on both my intake and my exhaust valves. Um, it's very important to check both because 
uh, depending on your cam profile uh, and the geometry of your particular cylinder head and valve train, um, it could be that you have uh, a different uh, ratio for your intake and exhaust and, and perhaps need a different push rod for your intake and exhaust. Uh, so I've been through this before. As I said, I already measured them and I've ordered my push rods. Uh, I went with these. Uh, these are one piece hardened push rods. There's no end pressed in. Uh, however they make these, it's, it's made out of one single piece. So there's no, um, there's no swedged or welded in tips here. Uh, they're just uh, forged or rolled or however they do them. I don't, I don't know, but it's a one piece and it's hardened push rod uh, designed for use with, with the guide plates. Now one thing I want to push out, uh, point out uh, in doing this uh, I don't know if you, how well you can tell on the camera, but the springs on these two valves, the intake and exhaust valve on number one cylinder here, are uh, just test springs. They're very weak. I can move them by hand as compared to the actual valve springs that would uh, be installed for engine operation. Um, you want to use testing springs or checking springs like this because the adjustable push rod the threads on the adjustable push rod are not very stout. This thing has a little bit of, of play to it, a little bit of wiggle to it. And uh, so you don't want to take a chance on uh, rotating the engine through with full spring pressure and having that full spring pressure damage your adjustable push rod um, because then you can't take an accurate measurement with it. And so I needed to put the uh, checking springs on here anyway so I can check my uh, piston and valve clearance, um, which I do. I do two different ways. I use the clay method, and I use the dial indicator method, just as a, um, just so I have two different um, independent ways to confirm uh, the measurement. But as long as those are on, uh, it's good to have those in place for measuring the push rod as well. And so there's not a whole lot to it. It's not extraordinarily complicated, but you do need to take your time and make sure that you are very deliberate and very careful about what you're doing. Um, and make sure that the uh, valves fully open and fully close um, so that you can get a, a good measurement um, and, and um, look for your good contact area here. And again, do the intake and the exhaust valve. And uh, once you've got that right, uh, then it just becomes a matter of uh, ordering the correct length push rod um, I did that. I installed the correct length push rod, push rod on both the intake and the exhaust, marked it, rotated it through, and got a beautiful pattern on both of them. So I know I've got them correct, which means I can go ahead and just install uh, the rest of the valve train after I put my, uh, my standard springs back in place. I'll be able to press on with the installation of the cylinder heads. So that's all there is to that.